Alfred Peter Conte became chairman of the party from nowhere as a result of court's order. As a result of court's order, he became the chairman of the party from nowhere. Nobody knew him in the party, you see. And today, it's an, if another court order is recusing the, uh, the, the ITGC from participates in, in, the, in the NDC, then so be it, you know. He who lives by the court, die by the court. Right, welcome back. Um, this is Wake Up Sierra Leone on AYV. Don't forget to send your comments and questions to the AYV News Facebook page. And well, just before we get into the issues um, this morning, I lighted for the, the discussion. Let's quickly go back to McKinney. And um, over the weekend, it was very busy um, as many um, stalwarts within the party um, come up for different positions, um, starting, ranging from national officers to the flag bearership. Um, our team has put together highlights of um, happenings, highlights of the event in McKinney. Let's take a look and we'll be right back to have a conversation with um, the chairman of the court established ITGC of the APC.
Welcome back. The show is Wake Up Sierra Leone here on AYV Television on Channel 33 on DSTV, Channel 399 on Radio FM 101.7 and on Facebook, on um, AYV News Facebook page. You have the opportunity there to be part of the conversation. Drop your comments, ask your questions. Just tailor them to the issues being discussed. And don't forget, we're also cognizant that those of you watching us on our www.aywvnews.com or using the AYV mobile application, you're also welcome. And um, we've always enjoyed the privilege of your time. And um, in the studio, we've been joined by Alfred Peter Conte, chairman of the um, court established interim transition governance committee of the All People's Congress Party. Alfred has um, written a formal complaint to the political parties. Um, Regulation Commission PPRC regarding the court variations granted to the TIIEMC to conduct the APC convention in McKinney, saying the committee is not um, legitimately seated to have conducted the National Delegate Convention. Alfred, good morning and welcome to Wake Up Sierra Leone. Um, good morning and thank mm. you for having me. We, 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 we've seen a letter um, signed by Alfred Peter Conte to the political party's registration um, questioning the legality of the um, TIIEMC um, for conducting the National Delegate Convention in McKinney. First off, did that letter come from you? Yes, I wrote mm. that letter. Mm. So on, on what grounds are you questioning the legality of the committee that conducted the National Delegate Convention? Well, on the grounds that, first of all, um, the ITGC, mm. the committee that I chair, right. is in charge of the overall affairs of the APC mm. until convention, which is the National Delegates Conference. Mm -hmm. And that 
particular mandate was given to us mm. in the final judgment of his lordship Adrian Fisher from the same high court. Mm. So an interim, uh, um, an interim injunction or interim ruling mm -hmm. um, would not actually override that type of um, final judgment. So that's number one. Number two, mm. the TIIMC, the group that was given this particular task, mm -hmm. was only created to conduct elections. In fact, in the transition provisions, which is Article 82 of the All People's Congress Party's uh, mm -hmm. constitution, it clearly states their purpose, their mandate, and nothing beyond. So for someone whose job is to only conduct elections mm -hmm. and whose mandate ended on the 17th, according to even the, the chairman of the TIIMC, mm. he wrote a letter, uh, which is the, what you call certificate of compliance, mm. to myself, I believe the PPRC, and the judge, that mm. he's completed his job and all things that he was told to do, he did them. So he was done. When was, that, not, when was that letter written? Um, that letter, we received that letter on the morning of the 17th. Right. It's when my lawyer received mm. the letter. So basically, his, his, um, his mandate had expired. Mm. In fact, when he wrote to accept the position given to him, he indicated that his mandate expired. And when the PPRC made their final ruling mm -hmm. on the elections in one of the districts where somebody was elected that's not in the, in the country, that was not even registered to vote, mm -hmm. he was elected chairman of a district. And when the PPRC made that particular ruling to re rerun or redo the elections, mm -hmm. they did not give it to the TIIEMC because they know their mandate expired already. Mm -hmm. So these are all grounds for my letter that whatever transpired in McKinney is illegal and I don't want anybody to countenance it. Um, the, the task, the, the mandate given to the ITGC still stands until that is... I'm a little curious, um, Alfred. You mentioned the TII... Um EMC is a body created by the new constitution of the APC, correct? Correct. And um, it's mandated to conduct elections. And so it did conduct the lower level elections. But the National Delegates Convention was also an elective con conference where mem national officers were going to be elected, where flag bearer would all, um, was also going to be elected as it happened. So is that not part of their mandate to have also conducted the national ele um, delegate elective con um, convention in McKinney? Well, you go by the law, the, mm. the, sorry, the, the ruling. Right. The ruling mm -hmm. stops at lower level elections. And it was very clear. It was clear. Mm. In fact, in the courtroom, um, one of the lawyers representing the defendants, or I would say uh, the, in this particular case, the plaintiff, mm -hmm. in, in, the, in the ruling that came out on the 23rd, one of the lawyers stood up and asked if the TIIMC is going to be allowed to conduct election onto convention. Mm -hmm. And in that courtroom, the judge clearly stated that the mandate ends at the lower level elections only. Mm. So that's why, in fact, the chairman of the TIMC wrote the letter that their mandate has ended. Now, the body in the constitution that's supposed to conduct all elections is not the TIIEMC. There's a separate office for that. Mm. My, um, my submission to the CRC, which is the Constitution Review Committee, mm -hmm. was to create an office. I named it OOE, Office of Elections. Mm. But they gave it a different name. I don't remember the correct acronym. Right. So there's an office for that. Mm. And it's an elected position. Mm. We have to go in. We elect people from every district whose responsibility is to facilitate the conduct of elections. You also mentioned that um, the body that was charged with the responsibility of conducting a national delegate convention by the court is um, the ITGC. How so? How did that happen? Um, is, was there a clear order from the court that it's the ITGC that should conduct a national delegate convention? 
clear order from the court, and that is paragraph 9010 mm. of the ruling. That the, the ruling from which just, um, Justice Adrian Fisher? From Justice Adrian Fisher. I'm mm. talking of the final judgment right. that came out. Mm -hmm. And that judgment was never contested. Nobody appealed, which means it stands. Mm. So we still are the body charge to conduct the National Delegate Conference of the All People's Congress Party, mm -hmm. and we intend to do so. Did, did you make it to McKinney as the chairman of the ITGC, especially now um, alluding to what you've referred to as the court order that you are the body charged um, to have conducted the, the National Delegate Convention? Did you make it to McKinney? And if yes, and what, what I mean, um, led to you not being in charge of the convention? Well, first of all, there's, a, there's an injunction, and mm. I even wrote a press statement, a public notice, on that injunction right. that the All People's Congress Party, the ITGC, will ensure that we obey that particular injunction. Mm. So we, the injunction ends on the 23rd. And amongst the people injuncted is the ITGC, which is, I think we have 37 defendants. Mm. The ITGC is defendant number 37. So on those grounds, I cannot go there. Mm. I mean, I'm a, I'm a law-abiding person. That's why... The last time I was taken to the same court for things that I believe I did that were correct, but the court said, no, you were wrong, and I was slammed a 50 million fine, I have to apologize and all that, and that, that fine was waived. Mm -hmm. So as it is, we have to start obeying the law. I cannot go there if I'm injuncted. But the same um, 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 I caught charge, Justice um, Anabuni that um, slammed the injunction for restraining the party from holding the National Delegate Convention. I mean, a few hours um, later, came back and um, granted permission. And so what stopped, um, Alfred, because the, the injunction was, was, was lifted and uh, you were now permitted by the same court and the same judge to go on with the convention. Yes, well, one thing I've learned, if you're not certain in the law, you go for clarification. Mm. Um, there's nowhere he labeled who is to go and who is not. Mm. I know in that particular statement, when I read the, what he called the variation, right. when I read the variation, it clearly indicates that the injunction still stands. Mm. It clearly indicates. On the ITGC. But, of the ITGC. Mm. But what I found right. out with everything that her lordship did, it's, there's a possibility she was misled. Mm. And because the third defendant, which is the APC, is governed by the ITGC. Mm. I was on my way here and somebody was saying, we did an analogy, like it's taking um, the engine mm. out of one of the school buses and say, okay, we're gonna replace that engine with uh, one of those little keke engine mm. to carry the bus. That's what happened in McKinney. The real engine wasn't there, so it's null and void. The bus did not move. Mm. Uh, Alfred, let, let's look at the convention itself. It's been held. Um, national officers have been elected. Um, the flag bearer of the party has been elected. And you're saying the body that conducted um, those elections, the body is not legally um, seated for, I mean, to have done what it did in McKinney. Does that mean, um, in your estimation, all what has transpired in McKinney would be nullified in your um, view? Um, it, it has to be nullified. They mm. know, let me tell you this. The notion that you can just ignore the law and do what you want is something that I notice around here that it's chronic. Mm. People just don't pay attention to that. You cannot conduct elections. In fact, one thing that baffles me mm. is that the, 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 the person entrusted with that task is a lawyer of mm -hmm. decades of standing, probably. I don't know how long. Mm. But you, you expect them to be like, well, you know, your lordship we should do ABC first before I can reconstitute. Mm -hmm. Even to constitute the ITGC, 
there were specific instructions how to go about it. And uh, to construct the TIIMC, there were specific instructions how mm. to go about it. And based on what I found out later, a lot of the uh, um, TIIC members did not go because they know something wasn't right. Mm. When you see um, the, the, the elections of the national officers, the flag bearer will be nullified, does that mean, I mean, with all certainty, that every legal avenue would be explored by Alfred Peter Conte here? Every single one of them. Mm. Not an iota will be left out. Um, we have to make it right now or else we'll be knocked out. Mm. We don't want any technicality. We don't want any legality to kick us out of the race. Mm. We want to contest in the June 24th, 2023 elections. Mm. And we want to do so with all the necessary legitimacy. And uh, it's my job right now to ensure that we, do our, we play our role to make sure our people are not deceived. Mm. If the goal here is to ensure that you come out as a formidable force um, to participate or compete in the June 24th multi-tier elections, many have submitted argument um, citing political expediency for the APC that you do not have time. Is there a possibility that you go to, you go to the table, um, have a conversation, have a dialogue to see whether or not the, um, the personality called over the interest of the party is, I mean, can be agreed upon, can be negotiated and compromises made to push the party forward rather than going back to court. Which one would you rather choose for the sake of protecting democratic practices in the party? Well, I've dealt with them for nine months and uh, I know what I'm talking about. There's mm. no in no way out, no negotiation with them. Mm. Um, it's only war, war, war. So mm. at the end of the day, we choose the legal means to ensure the right thing is done. Negotiating at this moment is just to tell them, explain to them that everything you did is null and void by virtue of illegality. Mm. So let's go back and do it right. That's the only thing I believe we can explain to them. Um, negotiating, I'm always open to negotiate. I've, I've negotiated in the past, and I've done what it takes to make sure the people get what they want. But this notion that time, 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 in Sierra Leone, when I was a boy, we used to say, you rush, you squash. Mm. You know, you don't want to rush and end up in a ditch. You want to take your time, cross your T's, dot your I's, and get it right. So once we hit the pool, the pool's on, on um, 24th June, people will be able to express their intentions and come up with a, a victorious APC candidate. Alfred, at some point, many people thought that the, that deep-rooted um, feud, impasse, pandemonium, the rancor in the APC, I mean, they, they, they've been thrown away when pictures um, were circulated on social media, that you've made peace with the APC when McKinney, I mean, pictures were seen with you and uh, um, the outgoing national chairman and leader, and with other stalwarts of the party. What changed from that time on? Because it appeared then that that, 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 that was a moment that puts the party together ahead of the just concluded national delegate convention of the party. So what changed? Well, it's simple. I want you to know that those particular pictures, those statements, everything that came out that were peaceful and nice mm -hmm. still stands. Nothing changed. Mm. The point is we've reached a point which we, we did something as a party. There's a poem by Anoel, you know, a, a poem mm. that says, for want of a nail, the shoe was lost. For want of a shoe, the horse was lost. For want of a horse, the rider was lost. For want of a rider, the battle was lost. For want of a battle, the kingdom was lost. All for the want of a horse, shoe, nail. An entire kingdom was lost. So everything that's happening here is because they don't want to, to do the right thing. What they did 
with her lordship is something they tried several times. Their intention since day one is to push me out of the way so somebody else will chair the national delegate conference. They said this man is too strict. If he goes there, he won't let the reggae play, you know? He won't do this, he won't do that. So they're terrified. So to kick me out and do everything, like the poem I just read from mm -hmm. Anon, it's the same thing. You have, you, you, you've lost it all because you just want this horseshoe nail not to be there. Mm. There's, this, there's this theory that um, Alfred is angry, Alfred is going, is taking the APC to court because um, the financier of Alfred when he, um, he was managing the affairs was disqualified to contest and, and Alfred was bidding um, for Sam Sumana. So when Sam Sumana was disqualified to contest, then Alfred is now going back to court to ensure that the APC as a party is destabilized. So first of all, it's very insulting when people say, you know, Sam Sumana is my financier. Very, very insulting. You know, I will say to you probably in the past uh, um, uh, um, two weeks, what I have spent out of my own pocket. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's multiple times mm -hmm. what he donated to the APC. He never gave me anything. He never financed anything. Mm -hmm. He donated to the APC, something that the party appreciates, a total of 240 million on three separate occasions. So when you put it that all together, compared to what we've spent, I cannot say anything wrong with him per mm -hmm. se, but it's insulting. He's not financing me. He hasn't mm -hmm. financed me. When I came, I noticed that Sam Sumana and other people were wrongly treated. And my job was to bring the All People's Congress together. Mm -hmm. You know, the mantra is APC for all. Everybody should come together. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, I looked at him. He was not treated rightly. We said, let's see if we can make his is uh, is wrong right mm -hmm. and that's all we did mm. and him coming around donating making all these donations to the apc not to not to peter conte or alfred peter conte he made his donations to the all people's congress party you know so mm. he's not financing me i'm mm. being overspent to be honest when you look at the mm. people we're fighting uh, we're fighting against mm -hmm. in the in the legal um, field but at the end of the day we believe that the law is the law mm. even if you you do whatever it is to if you if you did something wrong they have to take you to task mm. you know? Alfred, it's it's up here i'm going to um going by the results that came out of the, the national delegates convention that um those for example who were part of the alfred peter Contest um, team in the ITGC. That, I mean, the people that the court ordered you to to bring in you out your own um, mm -hmm. uh, number of people. Some of them contested. They lost. Sulaiman Bumne Kamara lost, uh, and um, Ibrahim Honorable Ibrahim Dumbu, um, Bundu. Bundu lost. So is it that um, Alfred really do not or does not have the grip, the the support, or was not doing things the right way? Because you mentioned Sam Sumana. The court, I, 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 I still um, remember, ordered that all unresolved membership issues were to be addressed. Mm -hmm. And then we saw where uh, um, Sam Sumana was reinstated unequivocally in your words, I mean, as the, the chairman of the, the, the ITGC. And now the, 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 the TIIEMC put out a statement that, oh, he's not qualified because... Um, is not the, the, based on the constitution and all of that. Mm -hmm. So, so what is happening with your camp? Is it that you've not been able to actually, um, well, lead and get the required support in the party? No, it's not true. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, first of all, the people that ran that they saved from my camp, um, none of them actually um, went out there to campaign and do anything. So, mm -hmm. for the fact that they were absent and people still voted for them, shows something, mm -hmm. a little bit of resilience in the people. Mm -hmm. But I want to clarify to you that the crowd, the delegates that you saw, these were all what you call uh, polarized, mm -hmm. okay? 
So from the inception, from the registration process to, do, to create a register, to give party membership to people, that's where it all started. Because the five people charged with that responsibility, all of them endorsed the candidate that won the flag bearership. Mm. So it was something that was boiling out, you know, where you have 58 out of the 59 members of parliament endorsed one particular candidate, and eight of those members are part of the ITGC. And those five of those, four of those five people are also members of the five-man committee that was charged with the responsibility to conduct the registration process. Mm. And the person that won the youth presidency is also a member of that. And that person also came out openly at the declaration of this particular individual and endorsed him. Which individual? Dr. Samra Kamar, you mean? Yes. Mm. So when you look at what's going on, it's been playing on like that. So if they've all endorsed him, and they are responsible for the registration, they are responsible for the register, they are responsible for the locations of the elections, they are responsible for all these things that were going on, it was fixed already. So uh, I, I was just going to ask, I mean, with all that you've just submitted now, are you saying the election ended even before going to McKinney? Oh, yeah. They told me, in fact, in the meeting, in the ITGC meeting, the Honorable Lahaimara mm. said, we're not going to a convention, we're going to a coronation. Mm. It's done already. It's a done deal. Now, what I want to say to you, um, I guarantee you, and they know it, they mm. know that, should we go out? and register the people openly and hold a fair elections, none of them, none, will come back. The result will be totally, entirely different. Are you making this, are you making this allegation up that um, the, pl the, the plan, the rigged the elec the, 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 the elections even before going to the National Delegate Convention, simply because the people you fought against are now being elected as, I mean, to be at the M of Affairs in the APC. You fought against the um, previous executive members because their tenure expired and they were still holding offices. You also um, took the party to court because of financial probity and many other things. And those who were in charge have now been elected in that national convention. The al Hajim Kaluman Sa is now the chairman of the party. The um, Ambassador Osman Fodeyans and the Secretary General is now deputy. Are you want you to use the word allegedly the chairman? Well, I, I, I'm just uh, going by, yes. the, by the results yeah, by the, there. Yeah, by the, by the results yes. there, exactly. Because so, as far as the law mm. concerned, I am still the chairman interim mm. right. of the ITGC of the APC. Mm -hmm. And until I conduct on behalf of the ITGC, um, the NDC, there is no chairman. Mm. We have to go there and elect. The mm. ITGC have to be in charge of that convention and elect the chairman. So Why would you be running the, the, the affairs of the party from as um, chairman of the ITGC? Where? Yes. At the party office. Mm. I mean, it's, uh, we have to prepare um, whatever happens in that particular day, in that courtroom or chamber or wherever, um, was a mistake. Mm. I understand that the, the intent was good mm. to ha have the APC go and conduct, but had they presented the full story to her lordship, I don't think she would have done it, you mm. know. And one thing I want the world to know, the people that came out and did those submissions were never members they were never people approved by mm. the ITGC to go there mm -hmm. and represent the ITGC. I don't know what the law says. In fact, maybe from here I'll mm -hmm. be going to CID, the Criminal Investigation Division there, mm -hmm. to find out what the way forward to, f to, to deal with those lawyers mm -hmm. who showed up and mm -hmm. basically fabricated mm -hmm. a lie that they are representing the Interim Transition Governance Committee of the APC. Mm. I'm the chairman, and I'm not aware of it. And eight members of my committee are not aware of it. I spoke to somebody from the other side that said, no comment. No comment means he's afraid. Mm. But he, too, is not aware of it, mm. you know? So we have to be very careful 
with what's going on, mm. and I want to explore what the law would do to those lawyers that basically went, because this is serious. This mm. could lead to national security problem, mm. you know? So to go there and fabricate to that level to get a judgment that you know is not true, what you did is not correct, that what you claim or you purport to represent mm. the client never hired you, never gave you the permission. I've asked... So there were lawyers there who said uh, they were representing you. Is that what you're saying? Yes, they said they were representing the ITGC, and I'm not aware of them. Mm. Now, when you, list, when you looked at the... Uh, um, or they were representing the APC, either way, mm -hmm. you cannot do either, you know, of those without uh, um, the green light from the ITGC. Right. And you look at the... You look at the, uh, um, the way they went about it, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's, just, it's, just, it's just ridiculous. I, I want to run through some messages on Facebook, but just before I do so, is there a timeline um, that Alfred Peter Conte is looking at um, to start exploring the, um, the, the legal route for, for, I mean, seeking redress? I mean, is, do you, are you looking at a time frame where, I mean, legal suits will be filed in? Well, first of all, I am, because mm. one thing I know, there are lots of aggrieved members of the APC, so I might not even be the person that will file this particular um, lawsuit to get a redress. Mm -hmm. And I believed if we showed up um, on Thursday, which is the day set for, mm -hmm. this, for the hearing of the injunction that was slammed on the ITGC, um, I believe... A fresh lawsuit will be filed, you think? I believe something will come up and we will see what's going on mm. all right let me run through some messages but also to you our lovely um viewers and listeners we are expecting the chairman of the political parties um regulation commission on zoom um lawyer abdullah bangura and also um the uh, the chair of the tii um emc also there online um Ibrahim Suri to um, be part of um, the show. Let me quickly take some messages. Um, Keke Kano is saying we're not even expecting to come with um, here this morning. Are you making a scene? Um, Peter Conte's mandate is over. Let him leave the APC in peace. It's not bigger than the APC or court. Um, let so many messages, but I have to take those that speak to the issues. This new court ruling by um, Justice Anaboni gave the TIIEMC the right to conduct the election. Peter Conte, be careful. Victor Fode is saying, Mr. Conte, please don't forget that the ITGC was established by the same court that slammed the injunction against the same ITGC. So please try to get to the court and see why the ITGC was injuncted and not the party. Um, Osam Conte is saying, APC, that una so-called convention will be disqualified. Una get for go back on the drawing board and una go gains. Um, Anthony Kamara is very, I mean, it is, um, and you took, um, okay, you're too disrespectful, Anthony, please. Ibrahim J. Oscar is saying, the way APC is fighting each other, if they win the coming election, it will be a disaster in the country. Why I say so? Before you fix someone's house, fix your house um, first. The APC, the APC's house needs fixing. Mohamed Kaibo is saying, I believe Alfred Peter Conte is no longer fighting a just cause in restoring democracy in the APC, but he's now fighting for personal gains, which I believe, in my opinion, must have been pushed and fueled by another fraction, um, fraction of the party or outside of the party. Right, um, Alfred Peter Conte, ITGC was injuncted not to take part in any role in the APC's convention. Um, so many messages. Let me see if at most I can actually accommodate five more messages. We have many. Um, salute to say, Mr. Conte, Mr. Peter, come to your sense and allow the people to man manifest. You've um, abused your chances of uniting the party. For this, I say, Peter Conte, um, okay, I'm not going through that. Um, Tijan M. Kaika is saying, Samuel, I really want to believe, as um, said by Mr. Conte, that the convention was stage managed. Wise, please ask Mr. Conte to tell us more about that. Um, Alfred P. Conte conducting another um, flag bearer race. Uh, 
would be a waste of resources. Lamin Amara Kamara is saying, I believe the lawyers that went to represent ITGC and the APC to court do so based on simple majority. So please, Alfred Peter Conte, give peace a chance. Kabo Abib is saying that we need to follow due processes. Thank you, Alfred Peter Conte. We need to go by the law. Ambassador Abdul Rahman Dialu Rahman um, said that. Samuel, please offer Alfred Peter Conte. Um, I strongly believe is okay. I'm not going through that. Peter, where have you been when the party was going through all these processes as an interim chairman? Not after the party have got its executive. Um, you want to go to court. Um, this does not make any sense. The executive is legal and the court gave the mandate for the NDC to go on. And the final message I will take is from Abubakar Rashid. Mr. Peter Conte, the injunction rest restrained the ITGC in which you are the chairman, but from the conduct of the National Delegates Conference, which has just been concluded, makes you no longer relevant. So these are a few comments I would allow you to respond. I mentioned earlier that we're going to allow Alfred to respond to some of the comments that I have read. But just before that, we have another member um, of the ITGC on Zoom. Um, let us quickly um, hear from him. Um, Honorable Abdul Kabo, good morning and welcome to AYV. Good morning, AYV. Good morning, the people of Sierra Leone. All right, thank you very much for accepting to speak to us, Honorable Abdul Kabo. First off, Honorable, I um, would love to understand, um, were you in Makeni? Did you participate in the just concluded National Delegate Convention as a delegate, did you vote? Yes, I voted in the convention as a delegate. Mm. Um, being the secretary of the ITGC that was injuncted, did you um, have the legal right or the legal standing to have gone and participate uh, and participated in that convention as? Um, the secretary of the committee that was injuncted? I didn't attend the convention as the secretary of ITGC. ITGC was injuncted. I am an ordinary member of parliament representing constituent 077. And members of parliament are delegates. So my delegate status was precipitated on the fact that I am a member of parliament representing constituency 077. Well, um, just quickly, out of curiosity, were you not a member of the ITGC by virtue of you being a member of parliament based on the court order? I was a member of ITGC because I was nominated by the leader of parliament. Right. Um, let, let's get to it. Now, um, when the injunction was slammed, restraining the party from going on with the National Delegate Convention, you, um, we read a press statement that um, carried your signature, um, discountenancing the, the court order that you were going ahead with the convention and um, nothing was going to stop you. And um, we also read another press statement signed by the chairman. And that press statement, you signed it in the capacity of the secretary of the ITGC. And we also read another statement the same day um, signed by the chairman of the ITGC, Alfred Peter Conte, um, saying that they were going to cancel the National Delegates Convention because um, the ITGC believes in the rule of law and is always in compliance with the court decisions. So what really happened? Why um, did you go ahead with the National Delegates Convention? Well, um, the, 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 the lawyers, the legal team of the party uh, constitutes um, lawyers with enormous experience. So what they did was to approach the court, you know, on two occasions on the same day. And at the end of the day, the, you all see um, the court order that came out indicating that um, it was not the party that was injuncted. APC as a party can carry on with its activity it was ITGC that was injuncted. That was why ITGC didn't conduct the National Delegate Conference, and also ITGC didn't participate in the National Delegate Conference. 
the 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 the, 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 the court ruling from um, Justice Adrian Fisher. Did, did it give um, the ITGC the legal standing to have conducted the National Delegate Convention before um, Ju Justice Anaboni's um, injunction? Yes, ITGC was the body that should have conducted the National Delegate Conference, saved for this uh, new court order that came out. So this new court order that came out clearly indicated that ITGC has been injuncted and ITGC should not participate or conduct the National Delegate Conference, and that TIIEMC should conduct the National Delegate Conference. You know, and um, that was why uh, Ibrahim Sori, Barrister, and his team went on to conducting the National Delegate Conference. Um, do, do, do you feel the claim of the, the claims of the chairman of the ITGC, Alfred Peter Conte, um, questioning the legality of the TIIEMC to have conducted a national delegate convention um, is something to go by um, because he's, he's threatening a legal suit against um, the convention and all of those who have been elected national officers and the flag bearer. Alfred Peter Conte became chairman of the party from nowhere as a result of court's order. As a result of court's order, he became the chairman of the party from nowhere. Nobody knew him in the party, you see. And today, an, if another court order is recusing the, uh, the, the ITGC from participating in, in, the, in the NDC, then so be it, you know. He who lives by the court die by the court, you know. He he has been he has been he has been made who he is by the court. So he has to respect the court. You cannot respect the court when the ruling favors you, or you cannot go against the court when the ruling goes against you. And when those when those very when those very um, 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 f filing was made against the ITGC, he was there happy. He was happy. He also his press release. And just because ITGC was injuncted, you know, he thought nobody would go ahead because he does not want the National Delegate Conference. He is part of those who want to hold APC to ransom. He does not want APC to progress. And we are a few months away from elections. If APC does not have his flag bearer now, it would have been disastrous for the party, you know. And everybody, everybody was happy for the convention. You saw massive participation. You saw the kind of mammoth gathering in Makeni. You saw people were jubilating helter skelter. This convention was a liberation for the people. And quite apart from it, there is not a single aspirant who felt, you know, the, who felt uh, unhappy with the process. The process was transparent. The process was free and fair. The processes were genuine. So all of the elections were contested by all of the candidates. And at the end of the day, all of them accepted the results. Nobody went against the result. So it's unprecedented. And everybody has agreed that the party should move ahead. It is not Alfred Peter Conte who was installed by the court that will retrogress this party. He was installed by the court and he was removed by the court. He who lives by the court dies by the court. So why should want to strangulate the activities of the APC party. And I have said it times without number, you know, that APC party is, is, is one of the strong forces in this country. You cannot have a democratic elections without APC party. And any attempt to derail the progress of the party is tantamount to even cancelling the elections. We don't have time. Let me, let me ask this question, Honorable, Honorable Abdul Kabu. Um, when the elections were being held, especially for um, national officers and the flag bearership, we saw, for example, where members who were, some of the members who were vying for some positions um, protested, uh, the likes of Karamo Kaba, who, was contested, um, who contested for um, the position of national organizing secretary, complaining of um, the process saying, there, 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 his face was not on the ballot paper, but other, others were there. Also for the flag bearership um, election, or, um, out of the 17 candidates, from what we gathered, um, AYV was there. 16 of them um, raised concerns that um, they needed to, to know the, the number of um, 
ballot papers. And then an emergency meeting was called in a room and then the election went ahead peacefully, like you said. But going back, is the APC ready for the legal battles? Because Alfred is threatening a lawsuit against the party. Alfred alone cannot strangulate the APC. APC is bigger than Alfred. He should know that. APC is fully prepared to contest in these 2023 elections. The people have said it, and you saw the kind of participation of the party in the National Delegate Com. You saw people, those people who are selling um, um, in, in, in Apache, those people, those old people in, in, the, in the darkest of villages, they all came out to show how happy they were that APC has, has had their flag bearer. So nobody can deal the progress of this party, except if they don't want 2023 elections. But APC is fully geared up. And uh, let me tell you, for Kamo Kaba, he participated in the elections. And I personally spoke to him whilst the elections were going on. He was there, you know, and they counted his votes. To say his, his face was not on the ballot is not correct. His face was on the ballot. You see, and um, and um, basically, even the the flag bearer aspirants, they raised several bone of contention, and they held a meeting amongst themselves, and consensuously they resolved to go ahead with the elections. You see, that was why all of them were present from the beginning up to the end of the elections, and they accepted the results. Go to the Twitter page of Dr. Richard Conte. He is a man I hold to a very high esteem. He has accepted and he has congratulated the winner. Go to the Twitter page of uh, Almami Petito Koroma, ambassador. He has accepted and he has congratulated the, the winner. Go to the Twitter page of um, um, lawyer Abubakar Kaloko. He has accepted and he has congratulated. Almost all of them congratulated the winners. They came out immediately. Dr. Samoa Kamara was announced as the winner. Other Flavia aspirant came out. They shook hands with him and they congratulated him. That shows, you know, that um, 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 they are prepared. They like the party than any or even their own personal um, um, interest. Hon hon honorable, and, as you said. Honorable Abukabu, there is another allegation that even before the National Delegates Convention was held, the election of um, national officers have been done. The election of a flag bearer had been done, which, uh, according to Alfred, everything was a well-calculated ploy. So um, he's saying you've rigged the elections from registration of membership, delegates, law, the conduct of lower-level elections, and all of that. So all of those things were planned by the APC, executed by you guys, especially those of you members of parliament who we are in the ITGC. So all of these things you've done just so that you are able to build your own team, your own cabalas against those who fought for democracy in the party. Well, interestingly, Alfred can't be more Catholic than the Pope. Those who contested the elections had a bigger stake in those elections than Alfred. So if they have accepted the result, who is Alfred to say the, the process was rigged? This is one of the most transparent elections I have ever witnessed in my life. The voting was done in public, right in the hall. Everybody was seated there. All the flag bearer aspirants were there. All the contestants were there. It was done in their, in their, in their, in their, in their presence. Alfred, so Alfred say, is saying the, 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 the elections were rigged before the National Delegate Convention. In other words, those who voted um, were members of the um, executives, uh, the executive that Alfred fought against. So you um, guys who did the registration, um, who conducted the, the, the lower level elections, did so, and you got all those who are in favor of you. So when you go to the elections, it will be, I mean, just endorsement. So they just um, voted the way you guys have planned it during the registration and during the lower level that, elections. That, that also is disingenuous. We were at PPRC. There were elections, PPRC canceled because of registrations complaints. 
there were several elections. People said they, they didn't have ample opportunity to register and that um, the registration slips were not enough. And people actually said, because of this reason, I am canceling, I am nullifying these elections. And there were new registrations in those very wards, in those very constituency. People actually ordered new registrations in those very wards, in those very constituencies. Mm? And a rerun was done in those wards and in those constituencies. For every complaint that was forwarded to PPRC, they were very judicious and they looked at it very carefully and they made their ruling. There were elections PPRC nullified and asked the TIIMC to rerun. So that is very clear that PPRC were very judicious in their in their in dispensing their supervisory role over the lower level, over the conduct of the lower level, and it's very, very clear. There was no complaint that was taken to PPRC that they dismissed carelessly. They looked at each and every complaint, and Alfred himself was part of those processes. He was jubilating whilst PPRC was saying, eh, let us hear on this, let us hear on this. He was jubilating. And all of those elections were won, you see. And for us, it, let me tell you, his intention was to strangulate the progress of this party. He never wanted this party to have a national delegate conference. He never wanted this party to have a flag bearer. He thought he would strangulate this party so that this party would not contest in these coming elections. But the people of the, the country and the people of the party have proven him wrong. Come to the National Delegate Conference, you would not hear any complaint. All of the aspirants were okay. All of the aspirants were satisfied with the process because it was transparent, it was, it was, it was free and fair, you see. So to, for Alfred to begin to imagine that him alone would stop APC from contesting, then that is a big dream. It's, it's that, the APC, Honorable Abu Kagu. It's the APC, I mean, the um, elected national officers, the flag bearer, is the party itself open to negotiation, to dialogue, um, to avoid any legal battle that would um, perhaps prevent the party from coming out as a formidable force in the June 24th multi-tier elections? Dialogue for what? When everybody is happy with the outcome of the elections, when there are no complaints from the from the National Delegate Conference, when everybody has resolved that we have to move ahead as a political party and we don't have ample time, hmm? Alfred has missed his opportunity. He has missed his opportunity. He has missed his opportunity. And he cannot strangulate the progress of the All People's Congress political party. APC is bigger than him. APC is bigger than myself. APC constitutes people who are soft, the suffering masses. APC constitutes, you know, even that mummy where they sell um, uh, granites in the street. Alfred alone cannot strangulate the entire progress of the party. He has to know that. And I have recused myself from the ITGC. Because ITGC is no more. I am no longer the secretary to a committee that is not in existence. Now the party has a legitimate structure, and they are taking over the affairs of the party. All right. Thank you very much, um, Honorable Abdul Kagu, for accepting to speak to us um, in such a sh short notice. We do appreciate and we've enjoyed the privilege of your time. Thank you very much. Thank you, too. Thank you, too. All right. Um, just quickly, as, I mean, as we try to wrap up the conversation, Alfred, you've listened to the submissions of Honorable Abdul Kavu. What do you have to say in response? Um, well, first of all, nothing he said surprises me. Um, what I am doing is what is correct mm. and what is right. The notion that you can go and do some sort of illegality and try to use human shield or saying nobody can stop it. Mm. Well, Sierra Leone is a sovereign nation. It's a country that has laws and the law is bigger than all of us. Mm. And I'm going to follow the law. As far as I'm concerned, the ITGC is charged by the final judgment of Justice Adrian Fisher to be in charge of the affairs of the APC until the National Delegates Conference. I want the world to know that mm. 
what transpires in that chamber or that courtroom is something they've been trying to do since, in, in, since I took over. Mm. They've been saying, we got to get rid of him. You know, they've tried violently. They failed. They've tried all sorts of ways. And they went to the judiciary. They've filed papers, like mm. the contempt, to try to send me to jail. And they did the second time. In a simple request mm -hmm. for extension, mm -hmm. they decided to go in and ask for my, um, uh, um, uh, um, basically, try to ask that the TIMC mm -hmm. take charge of the NDC. Mm -hmm. This is not the first time. So they saw an opportunity. They know that the judge that presided over the matter was, I think, out of the country. So they went to this other judge, or I don't know how it happened, mm -hmm. but to get what they wanted all along mm -hmm. by basically falsifying documents and all that. He mentioned the APC lawyers. Um, APC lawyers were in charge of the APC. If they want to go out, we should ask them to go out. They can't just go on their own. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of things out there. And the notion that the party is bigger than all of us is something that is not just for one set of people. It's for everybody. Mm -hmm. The party is bigger than everybody. And the, the flag bearer aspirant that he said considered already mm -hmm. is no surprise to me. How? Well, they've been holding meetings. They've been basically holding themselves out. Mm -hmm. You know, they've been holding meetings. The man that um, presumed the alleged chairman of the party, mm -hmm. the one that won the the elections. I mean, Al Hajim in Kailum and Sari. Yes, at the event, has been holding meeting in his house with all his uh, um, aspirants, mm -hmm. you know, trying to make sure things go out in this way. Like you said in your question to him, they were called into a room and they were basically, you know, uh, mm. told to do what they're doing. But deep down, we all know that they're not happy. You know, how can somebody. <laughs> You look at Dr. Richard Conte, could not even secure 100 delegates. And you look at someone like uh, Dr. Kelfalamara, could not even secure 60 delegates. And you're telling me it's, it's not so, it's not like I said, the mm -hmm. delegates were already prepared. These were basically um, uh, what you call a polarized delegates mm -hmm. that went there to execute a particular set. Another thing that's very important. For Which is quickly. Yeah. For all of them to know. Mm -hmm. The APC party, when you look at the structure of the national uh, um, officers that were elected, and I want you to tell me how many women mm -hmm. are in that particular structure. We fought for women. We asked that in the new constitution, we have at least 30%. And you look at it, I don't see any. I am yet to see a woman. And you look at the composition the geographical uh, uh, um, uh, um, composition. It's all basically, you take it from a district, it's been all basically from one district too. So we cannot call this a national delegate conference. That's why in my second public notice that I sent out yesterday, mm -hmm. I said we're going to have an all-inclusive national delegate conference that the ITGC, according to the court ruling, will be holding. Mm -hmm. But let's see what happens on Thursday um, when we go to court and the uh, Lordship will make some uh, um, judgments. All right. Thank you very much, Alfred Peter Conte, for your time. We've also enjoyed the privilege of that time with us here this morning.